song worship and your song selection today. Very blessed. Go ahead and open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13. Since uh, the Hargroves and the Campbells are both out of town, uh, I taught the uh, adult class. Uh, by the way, we will be going to a different uh, subject. Uh, Terry and Aaron will be leading us in a study uh, called uh, Culture Shock. So uh, come next Sunday, and uh, they'll be back. But so I had a one-shot deal. Hey, Mark. Good to see you, brother. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, but I um, forgot where I was now. <laughs> but, but anyway, oh, yeah, I had a one-shot deal. So uh, I was trying to think of something that kind of went along with what we were doing on Sunday mornings for the last 37 weeks, I believe it was, they said. Uh, was Jesus serious? And, uh, and I forgot something, so let me get it. Maybe. Whoops. There it is. All righty. But anyway, um, I started looking at the parables, some of the parables in Matthew chapter 13. And it talked about what the kingdom of heaven is. And I felt like that, that when I was reading this, that it was really speaking to some of the things that we had studied over the last 37 weeks uh, in the Sermon on the Mount and things that Jesus taught us. How we're, how we're to act, uh, the attitudes we're to have, uh, the words that we're to speak, what our mission is, what our purpose is. And I started looking at some of the others, so Friday I changed my sermon uh, to, to this uh, because I just felt like it was something that God had really put on my heart and, um, and, I, and I really just wanted to, to, to share with us because, uh, you know, what do authentic kingdom people look like? What are we involved in? What is our purpose? Uh, what is God's plan uh, for his kingdom? And so if you would, go ahead and turn to Matthew chapter 13. And I want to look at two very uh, short parables and, um, and you mentioned uh, Ryan, uh, Alan, Ryan Martin. Y'all going to think Ryan's up here preaching because it should be short unless I get windy all of a sudden. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, really, I really want us to get the message here. Uh, in Matthew chapter 13, verse 31, Jesus says, here is another illustration. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed planted in a field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of garden plants. It grows into a tree, and the birds come and make nests in its branches. To give us an idea of what Jesus is, is talking about. He says the kingdom of heaven is like the smallest of seeds that grows into this tree that the birds roost in. Uh, it, it provides shade. It provides security. It provides comfort. It provides a place uh, of, of, of the birds where they can nest, uh, where they can roost, all of those kind of things. And I was thinking, most of us probably don't know what a mustard seed looks like, and I'm not for sure if I do. I mean, I looked it up, but I didn't have any laying around the house, all right? So I went out, and I picked up an acorn. Uh, I don't know how y'all pronounce it, but I pronounce it acorn. Is it acorn? acorn. I thought y'all were going to say acorn. Uh, no, I don't want any corn right now. Uh, I've got some corn, but uh, anyway, we call it acorns. That's what we always called it down, but I thought I better... Uh, let you know exactly how I was pronouncing this. Yes, is that how you pronounce it? Comfort? Oh. Uh, real tiny. 
Real time. Did you did you lose it? Oh, because my acorn is so small, I, I, I just about lost it. You know, I thought, what happened to that thing? But you know, this acorn, it, it, it is this small, but yet it will grow. Because I looked at the oak tree uh, that, that was there, and my, sometimes my, my measurement and judgment of measurements is not the best, but it looked to be between 75 and 100 feet tall. And so I looked it up on the Internet to see how tall the oak trees grow, and most of them grow to be 50 to 75 to 100 feet tall. They can actually go up to 300 feet tall in some parts uh, of the country and stuff like that. But I was just thinking, how incredible, how amazing is something so magnificent as this 100-foot oak tree that it could come from something this tiny. And Jesus says this is what the kingdom of heaven is like as it starts. But it grows and it grows and it keeps on growing. And that was important for the audience of Jesus' day because the people of, of, of God's Old Testament church, and I mentioned this in our Bible study this morning, the people in the Old Testament church, they were looking for the Messiah. They were looking for the anointed one who was supposed to come. But they had a false assumption how Jesus was, what he was going to do, what he was going to be about. They were looking for this, this warrior king to come. They were looking for this warrior king to come on a white horse. And that he was going to set up this earthly kingdom, this, this palace on earth. And that he was going to have this royal army. And, and, and that immediately, immediately, he would begin to lead the forces, his kingdom, to war against the Roman Empire and overthrow the Roman Empire. This was their thoughts of Jesus. This was their thoughts of the kingdom. So you can see how this really rattled them. And how it really jarred their thinking. Because here's Jesus, nothing like what they were imagining, and nothing like the Old Testament prophets told them about. They misunderstood the prophets. The prophets are very clear about Jesus and how Jesus was going to come and how Jesus was going to die. But they read it wrong. And they interpreted it wrong. Sometimes like what we do today, uh, you know, with Scripture. And so they had this mindset that this was going to be the Messiah. And so when Jesus did not come like this, they refused to believe that Jesus was the Messiah. And so Jesus is trying to teach them and teach us that the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed or an acre that grows into this huge oak tree. And Jesus, He's okay with tiny things. Jesus is okay even with us sometimes when our faith is small. When we have tiny faith, Jesus can do remarkable things. Sometimes we're sitting here and we're thinking, man, I wish I just had faith. And sometimes we don't get out and we don't do anything in the kingdom. It's because we don't think that we're good enough or that we have enough faith, right? But Jesus, He can take the, the, the smallest amount of faith, the tiniest thing, I mean, who created the mustard seed? Jesus did. Who created the acorn? Jesus did. And, 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 and it grew and grew, just like the, the, the mustard tree. It, it's more a bush, but they can grow 8 to 12 feet tall themselves from that little bitty tiny seed. And he says, this is what the kingdom of heaven is like. And so Jesus wants us in our faith, and regardless of how big or how small we feel like our faith is, 
Jesus said, give it to me. Trust me. Matter of fact, Jesus tells us in one place, he said, you know what? If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, he said, you can say to this mountain over here, move and throw yourself into the sea and it will do it. Or, or you can say to this tree over here, uproot yourself and, 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 and be, re-root yourself over here and it will do it. That's with the faith the size of a mustard seed. Jesus can take tiny things and make something huge out of it. And I just pray that we as kingdom people, that whatever we have to bring to Jesus today, regardless of how big or how small, we will bring it to him. He continues on with the next parable, in verse 33. Jesus also used this illustration. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast a woman used in making bread. Even though she put only a little yeast in three measures of flour, it permeated every part of the dough. Jesus always used stories and illustrations like these when speaking to the crowds. In fact, he never spoke to them without using such parables. This fulfilled what God has spoken through the prophet. I will speak to you in, in parables. I will explain things hidden since the creation of the world. Jesus knew something about baking. Jesus knew that, that if, you got a, if you got a clump of dough, that if you take just a small part of, of yeast or leaven, if you take just a, a small smidgen of, of leaven and you work it in that dough, that over time it works in that dough and that dough begins to rise. Have you ever watched dough rise? I started to one time and I got bored with it. It wasn't doing anything. So I left it. Then I came back several hours later, and it had, uh, had risen to where it was going to be a loaf of bread. And Jesus says, that's how the kingdom of God works. That's how the kingdom of heaven works. That's how the kingdom of heaven works in our, in our world. That's how the kingdom of heaven works in our own lives. It starts out small. And so many times, we may not be able to see the effects right off the bat. That's, that's what he's talking about. We don't even see the effects, but it is working. It is silently working, and it is silently spreading and overtaking our world. When you and I surrender our lives to Jesus Christ, and when we're baptized and, and experience water baptism, man, our sins are completely washed away. We are forgiven and we receive the Holy Spirit in us as a gift. But it's just like Judy and I were talking just up here just a moment ago, and I know Leanne and I were talking, I'm driving over here this morning. We're always under construction. Always under construction. I told Judy it was kind of like, uh, you know, when you, uh, there's always road construction, right? Always. It seems like it never gets done. You got a road construction sign, and, and, and there's nothing happening for a while, and then all of a sudden, if, if, when you go back, you know, they've, they've laid some new asphalt, some new pavement. And it keeps on moving, it keeps on moving. And Judy brought this up to me. She says, you know what? Sometimes they have to go back and repatch something. And in that, that way with our lives, we're all under construction. We're all growing. And that's what Jesus is talking about when he's talking about this leaven inside the loaf that is always working, is always growing. And we never fully mature. Jesus is the one who makes us right with God. But this is the way it is in the kingdom. 
And I just wonder sometimes, you know, as we think about our world today, and I want to challenge us, I want to challenge us to get out of here today. And let's take the mustard seed that God has placed in us that is growing the kingdom inside of us individually. And that, and, that, and that leaven that's inside of each one of us through the Holy Spirit, and as it begins to work in our lives and in our hearts, that we take that leaven out and that we spread it into other people's lives, into other people's hearts. That's how the kingdom of God grows. No matter who you are, no matter where you may feel like that you are in your relationship with Jesus, More than likely, if you're sitting in this building this morning or on Zoom, you've got Jesus in you. And He's growing. He's growing. We, we here at Northwest, God is not expecting us here at Northwest to save the whole world. He's not expecting us to save the whole world. Not, a, not here at Northwest. What we need to be doing is wherever we're at is begin to spread that leaven into the lives of other people. Beginning with your family. Maybe you have family members that are, that are not Jesus followers, that, that have never experienced the blood of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus. Friends. Classmates at school. Work associates. People that you work with every single day. People in our neighborhood. Your neighborhood. People that we just have casual acquaintance with. People that you see at the supermarket. Just being leaven, spreading the leaven out of our hearts into other people's hearts. We never know. We need to be spreading leaven in our sphere of influence. It was really cool uh, on Facebook. I've got, a, I've got a friend that, that posted Bible camp, a youth Bible camp in Russia. To be honest with you, I didn't know that they could have open Bible camps in Russia. But I guess they do. Because, I mean, there, there, there were pictures of this Bible camp in Russia, and if you hadn't known, if I had known, I would have thought it was a Bible camp here in the United States. I mean, the kids, they had on shirts that said Levi's. Or some of the sports teams. There was a swimming pool behind them. It looked like a swimming pool in America. There were three baptisms in Russia, at the Bible camp this past week. See, that's how the kingdom of heaven grows. And I've got another friend that's in Africa, and I forgot what part of Africa he's in, but he posted pictures and sent me some pictures of, of baptisms that were taking place in Africa that they've been studying with, that their, that their body of believers have been working with, and they had two or three baptisms that took place over the last couple of weeks. You see, that's the way the kingdom of God grows. The kingdom of God is on the move and it's growing. 
And instead of us getting discouraged, we need to be sharing our faith. We need to be leaven and letting the leaven take over us and letting it spill out into other people's lives. That's how God works. He takes the, the tiny that we offer Him and He causes it to become something huge. So here's what I want to do. I want to encourage you this week as you're out and about this week you're going to have to have your antennas up, okay? But as you're out and about this week Look for someone that needs a helping hand. Look for someone that needs a helping hand. Regardless of how crazy your day gets and or how, how, how bizarre things turn out, just look for somebody that needs a helping hand. It could be someone at the grocery store that that just needs help with their cart. Just providing a listening ear. It could be uh, someone at the checkout counter, you know, that's, that's ringing up the groceries and stuff like that. And, and they just need somebody to listen to them. Just providing a listening ear. It could be someone in your neighborhood that just needs a listening ear. I had this happen to me, uh, well, I, I don't know, it's probably about uh, Thanksgiving time when we went down to Arkansas, and Sherry and I, we, we always, and, and we take my mom, we love KJ's restaurant, is on 367 out of Searcy, about three or four miles in Jetsonia. Actually, it's right across the road from my mom and dad's old house before my mom, uh, my, my mom sold it and moved into Harding Place. But KJ's has the best catfish. Oh, man. Every time we go down there, we got to have, go to KJ's, we got to have catfish. Y'all been down there, KJ's yet? If you go back, stop at KJ's. It is really, really good. And I remember the waiter that night after he gave us our bill. And we had a lot of talking and a lot of laughing going on between us. But when we got ready to leave, he said, God bless. And I thought about that. I thought, wow, I don't know if I've ever heard a waiter tell me, God bless. And so this last time we went down there and we were, uh, we were going to eat dinner out before we went over to my mom's at Harding Place. And so we went to uh, Colton Steakhouse and, and after we got through eating there, the waitress did the same thing. She said, God bless. Now, I'm a believer. But you know that it impacted me? And so, you know what I'm doing now? When I get ready to leave somebody, in whatever way, I just tell them, God bless. I don't know. That's being leavened, isn't it? I hope. I mean, God, He can take the smallest thing and He can use that to grow something. That's how the kingdom of God works. We don't know what He's doing. When I was talking about just giving somebody a listening ear this week, as you listen, just ask them when, when you get through listening. Because more than likely, I mean, people share. When, when you give them a listening ear, a lot of people really, they share some pretty heavy-duty stuff. You don't have to have any answers. They're not looking for answers. They're not looking for what you know. But just ask them. Can I, can I pray? For you right now. And very, very seldom will you ever have someone tell you, no, you can't pray for me. I had it only happen once. Everybody else? Yes. See, that's being leaven. That's putting Jesus into people's hearts, into their minds. 
And Jesus says, this is how the kingdom grows. This is how it grows. One person at a time. One person sharing their love with Jesus, the leaven that Jesus has placed in them, in us, sharing it with somebody else, planting that seed there, and then letting God work. So, let's get ready to take the Lord's Supper. Because I just want to thank Jesus for what he's done for us. Does anybody needs, okay, Everybody else good? But I just want to thank Jesus for what he's done. I want to thank him for his kingdom. I want to thank him for allowing us to be a part of his kingdom. Amen? I mean, we're part of the greatest work on this planet. I remember when I left Walmart in management, people thought I was crazy. I'm just going to I'm just going to lay it out. I have people tell me, "Man, are you ready for all the fussing and fighting inside a church?" And I said, "Well, you know what? You have the same stuff going on on your work spot, right? <laughs> a lot of times people talking, people gossiping, people backbiting, people getting angry, people getting uh, jealous, full of pride, or whatever. And I can remember uh, when I was talking to my mom and dad and telling them that I was leaving uh, Walmart in this lucrative position to, to, to go to preaching school to become, a, to become a preacher. I told them, I said, you know what? If I'm going to put up with fussing and fighting, I'd rather do it for a reason that matters for all eternity than just for uh, helping the bottom line of Walmart. You know what I mean? What we're involved in is for all eternity. What you are involved in every single day with every person you meet is about eternity. So Jesus, I just want to say thank you for your body. Thank you that you gave your life so that we can live. And not just live now, but that we can live for all eternity with you. I know, Lord, as Leanne and I were, were coming over with, uh, with London and Desi, uh, we were all just talking about, uh, about different things and, and particularly about uh, some of our loved ones as we get in hospital situations and not knowing if we're going to make it through those operations. But, but you know what, Jesus? We, we were just celebrating you because of you, Jesus. We are in a win-win situation. If we're in a, in a surgery, we wake up and we see our, our loved ones, we win. But you know what? If we wake up and we see your face, Jesus, it's a win. We cannot lose with you. And there's so many people that are so desperate for life right now, and you have placed your body inside of us. So, Lord, I pray as we take this bread today, help us to realize that you are in us. And may we share you with everyone that we come in contact with today, tomorrow, and until you come back. Thank you, Jesus. As we get ready for the fruit of the vine, I just want to say thank you, Jesus, for your blood. You wash us clean by your blood. Yes, we're all under construction. We all sin. We fall so short of your glory, Father. And I suppose that's the reason that, that, we, that, that, that we send this prayer up through Jesus to you. Because even in our prayers, we fall short. 
But thank you, Jesus, that you mediate for us, that, that, that we come through you and, and, and you give it to the Father. Clean and whole and perfect because you have washed us with your blood. Our Father sees you when he looks at us. So thank you, Jesus. And I pray, Father, that as we get ready to leave here today, that we will realize who we are. That we will realize what the kingdom of heaven is like. And that be us. So, Father, I pray that you'll be with each one of us. And even if we only have a mustard seed faith, Or if we only have a little packet of yeast to go in a big clump of dough, help us, Father, to give this yeast. Help us to give this seed to you. Because this is how your kingdom grows. It's about you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.